Welcome back. It's a brand new episode of Laugh With Me. I am your host, Jeremy Odom, as always. And we've got a special episode for you this week. We are celebrating Festivus. Happy Festivus, everybody. For those of you that don't know, here's a quick rundown of what Festivus actually is. It's a secular holiday celebrated on December 23rd. It's an alternative to the pressures and commercialism of the Christmas season. So for those of you that are saying Christmas is for the toy companies, Christmas is a Hallmark holiday. Well, first of all, no, it's not. But there's many other holidays being celebrated throughout the the season as well. Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, the before mentioned Christmas Festivus is for the rest of us and we will be celebrating that this week on laugh with me one of the ways we're going to be celebrating is with the airing of grievances I've got plenty of problems with you people that I'm going to be addressing here in just a little bit and I'm going to be taking live calls from you so you can air your grievances as well it's going to be a good time but some of the other things of festivus that i know some of you are going to be celebrating this 23rd of course there's the aluminum pole you're going to have your festivus pole up it takes the place of your christmas tree it's going to be a symbol and the centerpiece of all celebration you have on the 23rd you've also got the very important feats of strength the head of the household must be pinned for festivus to end that is a battle that generally happens after the festivus dinner a wonderful dinner to be had where everybody sits around the table and enjoys a nice meal that's also when the airing of grievances happens as well and then you know throughout the day you've got your festivus miracles it's just things that happen in the spirit of festivus that makes everything kind of click together those of you that don't know what festivus is obviously aren't very familiar with seinfeld (laughs) it was in a season nine episode called the strike this happened in 1997 and it was uh kind of the the main focus of the episode even though it's not named uh after that episode but it is a classic moment in Seinfeld history. And you know, you know, we're so many years away. I was watching, you know, Seinfeld as the episodes were coming out weekly on NBC back then. And uh, I think I was uh, maybe a sophomore, uh, sophomore, junior, probably a freshman or sophomore in high school then. And I didn't realize, I knew then obviously, but as we're so many years later, I totally forgot that this was in the final season, that this episode was on the back end, very back end, the very tippy back of everything uh, that the series is. It's surprising because it's such a classic moment and something that is still celebrated today. But we are here. It's Laugh With Me, and we are celebrating Festivus. If you've got grievances to air, make sure to hit us up on the Twitter at Laugh With Me Pod. You can also find us on Instagram at Laugh With Me Podcast and air out your grievances. We've got a plenty of they have problems with, and we're going to make sure that everybody hears about. Happy Festivus, everybody. very special episode of Laugh With Me is brought to you by the official trainers of Festivus. This December 23rd, you have two options. You're either going to be defending your household to fight for your life and make sure you don't get pinned to keep Festivus going, or you're going to be trying to pin the head of the household. Either way, you need to be prepared. The official Festivus trainers will get you ready all year long to be physically in shape, strong, dominant, and have the endurance to either take care of your home or take care of that head of household and get the pin. Festivus can't end until it happens. The head of household tra- official trainers of Festivus <laughs> are these sponsors of Laugh With Me. <laughs> now back to the show. We're going to be opening up the Laugh With Me phone lines in just a little bit so you can air your grievances. Again, you can also follow us Find us on Twitter at Laugh With Me Pod and on the Instagram at Laugh With Me Podcast. Air your grievances. The airing of grievances, it generally takes place immediately after the Festivus dinner has been served. Um, 
you know, some mental health professionals believe that having a space for people to air some of their grievances to their family and friends could actually be a good mental health thing. Generally, though, this is avoided during the holidays. You're just trying to get through with smiles in order to get home later. Uh, But it's always good to see family and friends. Festivus is just a little bit different. You know, you kind of air it out. You get everything off your chest. And then hopefully that chip off your shoulder make you feel good all around, right? Things, people, events, they disappoint you throughout the year. 2023 has been no different. All of us have had things in our lives that have just come up a little short in our eyes. And we've, we've got some problems with them. I am one as well. I have some grievances to air. I got a few that I want to get off my chest. You know, this is, in fact, the Festivus episode. So we are going to be airing of the grievances. Just this past Saturday, finishing up some holiday shopping, driving home. I'm in the right lane. In the left lane, there's a car about a half car length ahead, you know, of pace of me. And apparently this fellow wanted to be in my lane, hits his turn signal, but doesn't look, and he just starts merging into my lane. I immediately slow down, hit the brake, honk my horn. He kind of does a little little waggle with his car because he caught him off guard because obviously he didn't see me. But this fella, dealer plates, was trying to get all the way over to the dealership. He was focused on where he was going and not what was around him. I got a problem with you, buddy. Watch where you're going. You could have caused an accident. And just before that, I'm in the parking lot of uh, another, like a, I don't know, like a little strip mall, and almost witnessed an accident trying to turn into there. I didn't witness it, but my wife almost did. She said, oh, we almost witnessed an accident. And I said, where? And then she didn't want to tell me because obviously I didn't see it. So I didn't almost, wit- I mean, at that point, she almost witnessed an accident You know, because I'm focused on the road. I'm doing my job as the driver. That's what this fella should have been doing. Hey, buddy, the guy with the dealer plates in Omaha, Saturday afternoon. Wrong place, wrong time, buddy. Watch what you're doing on the road. So I don't have this job anymore, but I had it um, for the last few years um, previous to about a year ago. So it's been about a year, but I had it for like three years before that. Okay, anyway, had this boss. And I'm not going to say who I worked for, but it was a grocery chain that rhymed with Roger. And this guy, he would come in the store. So he didn't work in the store. He was in charge of like eight stores. And he would just, you know, like a district manager. And he would come around every once in a while, probably once a week. And he would come in. And you didn't know when he was coming. You didn't know what he was looking for. You just knew he was coming in to supervise. And he would never say hi when we had the first, you know, face-to-face of the day or whatever. He would just start in. He you know, in this particular instance, he would come in and, the, you know, he starts in the produce aisle. I think he found a package of strawberries that maybe were a little too ripe and he pulls them and he, you know, he pages for me and I'm doing whatever somewhere in the store and I come over and he just starts going in about this package of strawberries. And then I said, hi, buddy. I got to tell you, and he's not the the only person in a, a leadership position that has treated other folks that way, but I've worked for many people that haven't. Some that had, you know, tact, some that had a uh, personality and would say, hi, you know, how's it going? Just walked in. Hey, here's an opportunity. Let's, let's see what we can do about fixing this. Then you want to work for that person. <laughs> But when somebody comes in the store or your workplace or wherever it is and there's not even a greeting, it's just straight diving into, I got a problem with you. I mean, can you imagine going anywhere? You know, let's just say you were a customer and you, every place that you went to, instead of starting with a high or you know, or an employee asking, how can I help you? And you just started diving into problems. God, it would be tiring, right? I feel for all those pers- people, like all the people that work in customer service related positions, because that's probably what it's like. People are just rude. But man, if you're in a leadership position, you need people behind you to go. 
God, give a guy a break. Just say hi. Treat him like a person, you know? I've worked in leadership positions for, I don't know how many years now. Has it been like almost 20 years now? Just treat people nice. You know, there's time and place for for opportunity talk, you know, for constructive criticism. Like, that's a good thing. I like those talks both ways, whether it's to me or from me. But treat people like people. God, it goes a long, long way. So 2023, I just started in comedy. Uh, at the beginning of the year was when I first started to learn how to write and then, uh, you know, performed on stage all throughout the year and also started this show. And um, it has been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot. I've got a whole hell of a lot more to learn. We're, you know, a long ways to go still, but it's uh, definitely been something that I enjoy and something that I feel like I can do. Um, but one of the things I noticed, and it's been really just recent, like in the last four or five months, it seems like the gatekeeping within comedy like communities um, runs rampant. And when I first started, you know, in January, from some of the, um, I don't know, the, the people that you look up to in the community, they, they said that wasn't the case, that there was no gatekeeping, the funny's funny, and everybody's just going to, you know, try to help make the scene better and stronger. And at first, I started to see that. I'm like, okay, this is awesome. This is uh, inspiring. And then the last few months, you can tell that the, the tensions are rising and that the folks who are trying to hold spots are, are trying to hold spots. And if that's happening in Omaha, Nebraska, I can't imagine what it's like in New York, Chicago, L.A., Austin, Texas. You know, the hot spots of the comedy world. And uh, But Omaha's definitely prepping uh, for those, uh, those worlds, basically. Uh, but stop. I mean, why can't we all be successful? One of the things I learned, especially, you know, just working in, this is obviously different working at grocery stores, but if the folks that you are, uh, that are reporting to you, if you make them better, if you train them and you help them grow and you help them move on to other positions, that helps you as well. Like their success is your success. Um, So it's okay. I mean, look at like coaching, like in sports, there's the coaching trees. You know, Bill Belichick of the Patriots, he wants those assistants to go get other head coaching jobs. It's the coaching trees. He came from a coaching tree as well. That's how it works. It's the same in politics. You got folks that are coming off from the different branches that are, you know, from the highest levels. And they've got those folks under them that are going to someday take their spot. And they're grooming them for that. Like, that's okay. If they're successful, you're successful. Gatekeeping is slowing the process down for everybody. And it makes you look bad. It just really does. You don't want that reputation. I don't know. I got a big problem with that. It's something I'm looking out for and just trying to navigate and see who can who you can trust and who you can learn from because I feel like there's some bad advice out there right now in the in the comedy community in Omaha. Happy Festivus, everybody. We're airing while well, I'm airing my grievances currently. Uh, I got a big problem with the Grim Reaper. They took the Padres, San Diego Padres owner from us, Peter Seidler. He passed away tragically uh, here a couple of times. He, he had an illness, um, passed away from it, but it has made an immediate impact on our favorite team. I mean, he Peter worked so hard to change the culture of the San Diego Padres from a team that wouldn't attract free agents, a team that wouldn't always be competitive every season, who wouldn't be in the running to win a world championship. Peter worked so hard to change that, and he did it with money. He did it with spending and attracting free agents, and he did it. He got some of the best free agents that were available to come play for the San Diego Padres, and he was available. You know, he he, he sat in the stands. We, I, My family, we were at a, a Cardinals game against the Padres in St. Louis, and he was one section over. You know, I was able to shake the man's hand and tell him thank you. And I'm just so thankful that he's our owner and that he's doing the things he's doing for the Padres. And Because it's just amazing. You grow up <laughs> a fan of this team, you know, by no other reason than you, you were born in San Diego. And you get this curse of <laughs> rooting and 
for a team that's just bad year after year after year and just never in the hunt. I mean, two seasons they've made it to the World Series. 1984, so I was one years old. And then 1998, and I was fresh into high school. And that's it. That's That was my only memories of almost, you know, hitting the pin. I had no memory of that first one. But the, the 1998 one, though, I do have memories of almost hitting the pinnacle of, of their sport. Otherwise, they haven't really ever been that close. You know, there was a few playoff runs um, in the mix throughout the way, but mostly the team's just bad. And we've had good players come and a lot of good players go. But Peter was changing that. He was making us a competitive organization top down year after year after year. And you can see it. I mean, yeah, sure, the 2023 team didn't meet expectations, but this team's good. Like, you knew, even though we missed the playoffs in 23, even though we we thought we'd make it to the World Series, you knew that in 24, this team's going to be right back in the thick of it. Just got to change some things. But the passing of Peter, you can already tell um, there's changes coming, and it's got to do with the budget and it's got to do with um players that are coming in and uh for better or for or for worse we're gonna see we're gonna see what happens but always gonna be a fan of the team but man grim reaper why'd you have to take our guy <laughs> uh, we were just finally hitting a few year stretch where things were things were looking sunny in san diego and you had to go and make it dark, man. You had to go make it dark. I know there's been lawsuits, um, revol- you know, involving this. I I'm, have never been a part of it. I've just I know this has been a topic before, but I've got a problem with it. I just want to put this out there and put it on record that I don't agree with this. That every single time Apple announces a new phone, that my phone starts losing its charge a lot faster and it's not like slowly it's not like oh i've got an aging product so it's not going to operate as well as it should no it's dramatic okay if i don't have my portable charger with me at all times i can't make it through half the day i'm talking about half the day (laughs) when i go to pick up my kids from school my phone is dead if i don't have my portable charger and you might be saying, use your phone too much. No, everybody uses their phone too much. Okay, this is not a Jeremy problem. This is an everybody problem. Okay, this is the world we live in in 2023. So make it so it holds charge. And why when you announce the new phone? Because it, it's not like anything changed. We haven't updated the software yet. We haven't updated the operating system yet. It was literally a press conference. You invited the press to come hear about it. Instantly. I'm losing charge a lot faster. It's running just a little bit slower. I got a problem with that. I got a big problem with that. What am I going to do about it? Absolutely nothing. You know, I'm not. I'm not doing anything about it. I'm going to complain about it, you know. And next year, 2024, Festivus episode, I'm going to complain about it then too. Because it's a problem. And I have no faith that it's going to get resolved. But I would appreciate it if it did. This is something that's becoming more and more of a problem. You know, remember like Black Friday? And I know a lot of folks have been talking about this like on TikTok this year. At least more so than I've ever seen. Where they're like, oh, we're calling out the retailer. They're they're not Black Friday prices anymore. And they pull the sign, you know, that says Black Friday. And the TV is, you know, $159.99. You pull the sign and behind it, it's not a Black Friday sign. It's a different sales sign. It says $159.99. I mean, that person's technically wrong. The retailer didn't do anything wrong there because remember, anymore, you're getting Black Friday prices longer in the season. So you're getting them long before Black Friday. They just changed the sign to, you know, show you that it's Black Friday because on the calendar, we finally hit it. But they're giving you that price early. Okay, so there's there's really, you know, they're not going to, we're going to, we're not going to say, hey, we're giving you Black Friday prices on December 10th and then have an even cheaper price on Black Friday, but that's that's not giving you Black Friday prices. So technically those folks are wrong, <laughs> and it's just kind of rude, um, honestly, to be calling out retailers for that. But, but, something I do have a problem with, I see this a lot in the grocery industry, and this isn't, near, this isn't a holiday-related issue. This is an issue throughout the year. 
more and more they're promoting items as on sale. So they're putting it in your advertisement. They're putting the signs up in the store saying that it's on sale, but it's actually the regular price because the idea is we're promoting the everyday price. I, I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. I mean, draw me into the store with your ad prices. Sure, with some specials. Something to get me in the door, right? Give me the invitation to come into the door and shop with you. Then showcase your everyday low price in the store all around the building. Like, that's exciting. The ad that you're sending me should be the invitation to come see me. That's got to be hot. Okay, you can do other pieces to be like, hey, every day we're this price on this and we're this price on this and this is awesome and it's cheaper than everybody else. Awesome, do that. Okay, that's fine. But don't parade like it's an ad price because it's not. It's your everyday low price. Have that stuff all over the building and be proud of it. But it's not a sale price and it shouldn't be advertised as such. And it happens constantly. I got a big problem with it. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's fair to the consumer, and I don't think it speaks to your pricing. I don't think it speaks to what you're trying to achieve in the customer's eyes. I think it's cheap, and I think you're trying to get away with something. I mean, it's technically not illegal what you're doing, but you are trying to get away with something. There are ways to have the low price image. I don't know that that's it. Yeah, that, there's literally no joke <laughs> in this in this grievance. Other than you being fooled by the retailer thinking that they've got all these ad prices and they're, half of them are, are regular everyday prices. That's the joke. And I hope you're not laughing with that because, you know, the joke's on us on that one. It's my final grievance of 2023 Festivus episode. This is a big one. This is one that is near and dear to my heart. I love competing. You know, in, in anything that it is, if it's, you know, in life, trying to be the best you can be in your career, if it's in a board game, if it's in sports, if it's rooting for my favorite teams, if it's rooting for my favorite musician, I want to make sure that their their latest song or their latest album or their concert is sold out. Like, I want to make sure that they're the best because I believe in them, right? And I enjoy their art. I'm always going to root and work hard for the people that I care for and that I'm a fan of. But I'm very competitive. I am in the arena of competing, let's say, in a board game, like let's say Jenga. Okay? I've got a problem. If you're on the other side of this Jenga game and you don't take the game as seriously, because this is a game that if you do not take seriously, number one ends very quickly. And just think all those blocks fall, they crash. You got to build them back up. I mean, it's a process to get the game back to restart another game. And how disappointing if you're having the game of your life and the person on the other side is just lackadaisical with it and they don't care. Like, Jenga's an art, okay? Jenga can last. A, Jen a good Jenga game can last a long time with thrills along the way if you take it seriously. And I need competitors on the other side that are taking it seriously because I'm going to tell you right now. Every single Jenga game that I play, I take like it's my last Jenga game I'll ever play. And I want to win. So I got a problem with anybody who doesn't take it as seriously as I do. And, and you don't even have to take ultra serious. And I'm not like, you know, I'm not in your face yelling at you. I mean, it's not, I'm not, we're not talking about serious. I'm talking about like play the game. Okay. Play. If you're going to play, play the game because it's an art. I'm okay with losing if I get beat. I am. But I don't enjoy winning when the other side doesn't even try. So, well, that was the airing of grievances. Happy Festivus, everybody. In just a few moments, we're going to be taking live calls. We're going to get uh, you the opportunity to air your grievances live here on Laugh With Me. You are live on Laugh With Me. Happy Festivus. Thank you. Thank you. I have a real problem with the women's fashion industry. Tell me why we can't get a good pocket. 
phones these days are now like four or five inches long. And you're going to give me, if you give me a pocket, this teeny tiny thing that I can barely fit a lipstick, a lip gloss in. But men be walking around with giant ass pockets in the front and in the butt. I'm lucky if I can even fit my phone in my back pocket. Give us some freaking pockets. That's why you see when girls are walking around, they're like wearing a dress and they're like, thanks, it has pockets. Because we never get them. We need them. If men can have them, why can't women have them? Also, why can't we have consistent sizing? Why can't I go into the store and buy the same size in every item and have it fit the same? Men, their pants, they go by size, by like whatever, your waist and length. Women, it's like here's a size 10, but the 10 is going to be different in every single brand and in every different wash of jeans or any kind of pants. Make it make sense. You know, you said four to five inches, you know, to fit in your pocket to that. I just want to say that's what she said. Also, you said big pockets uh, for the fellas on the front and the back. That's because we got that thing on us. That's that's just kind of how uh, that works with the fellas. But thank you for calling in and happy Festivus. You're live on Laugh With Me. Happy Festivus. I got a problem with me not having a corgi. I, I you know, I love any kind of dog, but a corgi in specific. Okay, I need a dog because they're just, they're so cuddly. They're so friendly. Don't I deserve a friend? Doesn't anyone? And that's why anyone should be able to get a dog. A corgi. They're so special and they're just so loving. So if I get this right, you don't have a corgi? I don't, but I need one. <laughs> so you your biggest complaint of the year is that you need this puppy. Why don't you have a corgi? My parents won't buy me one, and I'm too young to buy one on my own, I guess. Oh, no. You need a job, girl. You need a job. Still too young. <laughs> well, good luck on your your uh, attempts to get a corgi in 2024. You know, I've been trying. <laughs> Happy Festivus. Oh, we have got to get a fella on the phone lines. You are live on Laugh with me. Happy Festivus. Happy Festivus, indeed. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to air my grievances anonymously, as I don't want to share these with the people involved. Don't have that courage, but I'm working up to it. Uh, my first grievance is there are some of these, some folks that are very, very near and dear to me. Uh, elves, you know, everybody loves them. They make the toys on Christmas. But what I can't stand and what I really want to get to them it's just I'm done with the incessant singing. The thing is, is that elves are not universally talented. They don't all sing well. That's a movie myth. And the other thing is, when you're watching a movie and it goes from room to room, the elves are all singing the same song, and it's very, very coordinated. When in real life, it's not like that at all. I was to walk from one end of my workshop to the other end of my workshop, I would probably hear a dozen different songs. It's a much more alike to, I don't know, being in the mall and hearing the same Christmas song being played at, at dozens and dozens of different places, which probably isn't a bad thing, but here, have yourself a merry little Christmas more than once a day. I, I love the song. I could sing the song for you right now. I'm not going to. But that song is a bummer. And I can't hear it 15 times a day. And those elves just will not shut up. When they're eating, even when it's time for, for us to have our meal, those elves are still singing. I have never seen an elf eat with their mouth shut. And I'm, I'm, I'm over it. I'm, I'm literally at my wit's end on this. Holy cow. I, I know you know, people are calling in. They're calling in anonymously. Um, you said you work with elves? Yes, yes. And it's not just the elves. It's the reindeer. You see these elves, they're, they're singing. They're, they're just, their food spitting all over the place, scooping up the table scraps. The reindeer are all over the hall, just eating whatever's been out there. I mean, I've already got a problem with reindeer. I mean, they're just lazy animals. I, I, I mean, a couple of years ago, I had a zoologist up there. She tried to feed me some sort of spiel about 
how it was cold outside and the metabolism and yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. Don't excuse it. Those reindeers are just lazy. You know, I, I, I had to go through a human resources disaster a couple years ago uh, when it came out about the reindeer games. Oh, you're pushing the reindeer too far. You're pushing them too much. Like, they don't want to do this. Hey, I don't know what to tell you, but I got four billion on the good list every year. I got to hit every house in the same night. And if those reindeer aren't ready to go, well, that's a failure. That's a big L on me. So I've, I've got to make sure that these guys are ready. I'll tell you this year, I moved the track a little bit closer to the abominable snowman just because I need to make sure that these reindeer are getting their cardio in because we're not going to fail on my account. So you have elves and you have reindeer? Hey, 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 hey. who's airing their grievances here? Oh, me sorry. My bad. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. The, the last thing I want to get off my chest is just my wife. I, I love her. She's the light of my life. No regrets in, in marrying her. When we got married, we set very specific boundaries. And one of the things that I wanted, I, I wanted a room to call my own. I, I don't know. Some people call it a man cave. Some people call it a pole. I, I don't know. The, the, the vernacular changes depending on where you're at. All I wanted to do was decorate the way I would. So I have a mini bar. I have a big TV. I have a recliner. That's all I need. And lately, the last couple of years, She's taken to invading this space, invading my personal space, decorating it for Christmas, as if I don't get enough Christmas the way it is. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, it's my job. I don't want to come home to it. I just want this space to get away from the elves, the reindeer. I'm my wife. I, I need that. And I, I'll be honest, I, I brought it up to her and... As she rain blows down upon me, I realized that I'd made a mistake. So thank you for providing me this service to, to be able to just get this off of my chest. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm busy Christmas Eve, but most other nights you can find me on Rudolph's couch. Well, thank you. I, I think I caught a maybe a ho, ho, ho in there. Um, I, I think I got an idea of who this is. Well, there you go. It seems like even Santa Claus celebrates Festivus. <laughs> That's the airing of grievances. Thank you to everybody for listening to this very special edition of Laugh With Me. I have actually been on a few other uh, podcasts this week. You can find me on Common Folk, um, a very fun uh, episode of their podcast uh, you can find that anywhere that you listen to your podcast um, it's just it's an hour conversation we just talk really about uh, me and kind of my journey from being uh, in the grocery industry for 20 years all the way to what I'm doing today and what you're listening to right now so um, it is a lot of fun and they were a great time and uh, thank you for having me on their podcast and then I had my third appearance on Where's the Line WTL the sports betting podcast they had their 100th episode we did it in front of a live crowd and you can find that anywhere that you find your favorite podcast This is Laugh With Me. We've got Festivus, December 23rd. I hope you guys have a lot of fun. Don't take the grievances too personal after dinner. And hopefully you can pin the head of the household. Thanks for listening to Laugh With Me. Happy Festivus, everybody.